Hello world, and welcome to a short series that I'll be doing for you guys, and it's called Russians Outside of Russia. So, this will be my first attempt at a proper, you know, more real-life football stuff related, so I'll be practicing my journalism and essay writing skills, or whatever, because uni's done, and I miss that, I miss writing essays, or research, so... I was thinking of introducing you guys more to the Russian football and also introducing you guys that not all Russian players play in the Russian league. And I honestly think that, you know, Russian players should, like more Russian players should play outside, but they're currently stuck. And I've mentioned why, and I think I'm going to do a video about like which players should leave. Because I think it's very important for for players, especially for, a, I want to say a weakish league like ours, to go and expand and try ourselves in hard leagues. But enough of that, the way this series will be run is I'm going to break it into three separate videos, I think, just so I can expand more on specific players. There won't be too many players, don't worry. But the first one I'm going to do, which is today, I'm going to cover the best. So I'm going to do like the best of the best, you know, the guys that play in the Russian national team, you know, you might have heard them of, of them and I'll be like, look, this is how they play. This is what they do. This is how they play for the national team. This is where they play. Blah, blah, blah. And bring some full manager stuff into it as well, just because it's funny. Next one will be, I guess, prospects. So like, oh, there's a youth kid in Spain. You know, he's playing for Barcelona, whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. And also the final one will be players that you haven't heard of and are doing well currently. And with the help of full manager, I discovered those players. So I hope you enjoy this series. I hope you enjoy the more real stuff as well. I like to think I'd enjoy more real stuff as well. I'm gonna run the intro now and I hope you enjoy this series and I hope you enjoy my more my attempt to be more real football content stuff if that's even a thing. All right I'll see you when the intro is done. So hello so to kick this off to kick Russians outside of Russia off, we decided to pick one of the most interesting Russian players, I think, and I guess arguably one of the most hated during the World Cup, Fyodor Smolov. So I did a little poll on my Instagram, which I'll link down below, and this guy, apparently people wanted him, well, wanted to know most about him, so I will start with him. I think in this video today, I will mention four players. So we'll have Fyodor Smolov, we'll have Golovin, we'll have Cheryshev, and we will have Kudryshov. So these guys have played, they all played for the national team. So you, if you don't know them, you should. Basically is the way I should say it. So Fyodor Smolov, this man is something. He was born in Saratov, Russia. He's a striker, I think you know. He, and he is age 30. So that's kind of his basic stuff. He has a F FIFA card of 80 rated. And I think last year it was 81. He had a, <laughs> a one to watch card, which I don't think ever played, which was a shame. I like that card. And he transferred this season during winter. He transferred to Celta on a loan for 630,000 pounds for half a year. So this guy, obviously, I'm in 2023 here. This is my uh, Bolton save, so he has changed a bit. According to Football Manager, he played 21 times, scored five. And if you look at his stats in real life, it's kind of scary because in real life, he's played 12 games for Celta from the moment I'm recording this video and scored two goals. So if you extrapolate, that'll be pretty much bang on. And in this case, as you can see, he came back, played in Locomotive, didn't do well. Uh, he didn't recover, I think, from his Krasnodar days, and it's a shame. Here, he had a chance at the end of Krasnodar to move to Europe, decided to move to Lokomotiv. I think it's fair to say that he didn't do well. In 19 games recently, he scored four goals, four assists, so not the best kind of return for Lokomotiv this year. And I think, I don't know, man, I'm kind of disappointed, at least personally. Look all the way back. I love this. I love Football Manager, by the way. It's giving you a lot of stuff, and it's giving a lot of visuals as well to show. So he started at Masters of Turn, went to... Uh, Dynamo Moscow had a few problems with, I guess, maybe you can say self-discipline and stuff, but earned a move to Feyenoord on loan, where he could have been good. But I think some personal problems made made it impossible for him to stay in Holland, which meant he came back to Russia, stayed there for a couple of loans, and basically until he transferred to Krasnodar on a free, he was not the best striker. He was good, a lot of potential, but bam, look at that. First season in Krasnodar, he was amazing. Look at that, second, amazing. And third, pretty good, you know, it's all good stats. And then hits the World Cup and that Paneka chip against Croatia right down the middle at the keeper cost us. I mean, cost us going further. But to be fair, I mean, he's a striker. The strikers are bound to do something crazy. And hey, he's not that bad of a player. 
I think he needs to rediscover himself. I think he's still getting used to Celta Vigo and Spain. And hopefully after the season, he gains taste and European football and he'll want to stay there. So currently on transfer market, he is worth 6.3 million, which is to be fair, it's good. I think it's fair. He is still decent. He is 30 years old, but still he's got potential. Because this is also a football manager channel, I will tell you something. His current ability is 132 and his potential is 145. So I think he's already on a decline. I don't think he'll reach 145 unless you cheat, which you shouldn't do. So what happens in my previous saves in full manager? Well, he typically goes for one season to Celta, comes back, either stays in locomotive or joins Zenit, as most good Russian players do. But when he comes back, he can be he can be signed for 7-9 million straight away. And I think he's good enough for, I guess, mid-table Premier League teams or leading striker in the... In the What's that league called? The French League. In the French League. I don't know. I hope that in real life he will transfer. So, and 2023, he's still decent. He's holding his own, you know, for 33 years old and good good physical still. I mean, maybe I'll actually scout him for Bolton. We'll know. But he's on, he's quite on a lot of money. I think as of today, he's had 39 games for the Russian national team and 14 goals. I don't know how well he adapts to the Russian national team style as of late because the way we kind of play is we focus through Zuba and we definitely require a big target man and he's a bit of a quick guy and I think that's why he hasn't played much in the World Cup. So yeah, that is Fedor Smolov. If you have any questions, give us a like, give us a comment and I'll continue to the next one. Next up, we have arguably the best player to leave Russia in I guess the more modern times is Alexander Golovin and this man, you've probably known about him, he's a good player. He's a good player for the national team and he's a decent player for Monaco. So this man transferred from CSK Moscow to AC Monaco for 27 million pounds in the summer of 2018. And this was amazing. This was just after the World Cup and he played really well. He helped carry the team. He helped create stuff. And as you can see here, after three years, he has developed into quite a good player. Good technique, good passing, good dribbling, like in real life. His tackling should be lower because he constantly keeps getting yellow cards. Uh, at least he used to do for the national team. He's a very hard-working player, but he also... He's a weird one. He's a bit of a box-to-box -box slash deep line playmaker, which is weird. When you watch him, he's... Man, I definitely like seeing him play. So, let me update you on some stuff about him. So, he was born in Kaltan, Russia. And, you know, he's a CAM and CM. So, that's his positions. But, to be fair, he could play in a lot of positions. I think in Russia, he plays typically lower. Just so he can ping long balls to Duba, so we can start our attacks. He is currently age 24, so don't pay attention to football manager. He has a 79 rated card on FIFA, and I think he's gotten a few man of the matches, and even a cool card, which I'm really excited to use. Currently on transfer market, he is 18 million, and he is the highest rated player in Russia, which makes sense. He's the only, I guess, Russian big name outside of Russia, like huge name. So in the 2019-2020 season, he has done better than last year. He is on 30 games, three goals and four assists. Again, when I'm making this video, it doesn't help that Monaco is not the best team when he joined. So when he joined, a lot of players left and Monaco were very low. He got injured and also that didn't help with, you know, adapting that sort of stuff but football manager predicts he does a great job he plays well and as you can see the, the older he gets the better he gets and let's see where monaco is in 2023 not the best as you can see in their his first season got third fourth and eighth monaco are in trouble currently they're not doing as bad but golovin can help out and hopefully i think that's why he said he may want to look on to move to a bigger team at some point point. and from what i've heard from interviews this man wants to go to teams challenging for the title. So as long as it's not PSG, I am happy. I hope he's going to join Chelsea, which I think he could have done. But to be fair, he made the right choice of joining Monaco because that way they can have, he can develop. What else can I say about him? His current ability in football manager is 147 and his potential is 163. I think those change with data, different databases and um, I guess updates. But what happens to him in football manager? It's very important. Pretty much in every single save, and I guess this is not a best example of it because it's only three years in, he pretty much stays in Monaco forever. I don't think he moves. And occasionally, if he does move, he goes to China for a lot of money. I think close to the end of his career. I think he's a Monaco born and bred. This game thinks he's going to be in Monaco forever. And to be fair, Monaco are a good team. And hopefully with a few signings, they could be challenging PSG again. What else can I tell you? If you want to sign him in this game, 
you can sign him for 40 to 45 million. Again, very, I think it's probably one of the most cost-effective signings that you can do. He's a really good player, good playmaker. And I am currently scouting him for Bolton. I won't be able to afford him, but hey. So, let's tell you some more stuff about him. He has currently played 33 games for the Russian national team and 5 goals. He scored 5 goals and he sits, for Russia especially, he sits much lower than... I mean, he sits much lower than you would expect and he also done 10 assists, so... I think he's he's definitely he's a weird one. Like I said, he's an engine. He's an engine for the team. He helps carry the ball off. He helps move the ball forward. And man, his dribbling is incredible. Shame I can't put videos of this because wow, this guy's good. But yeah, he is the best player currently outside of Russia. I am really excited to see what becomes of him. I don't know. I hope he improves in Monaco and then I hope he moves into a bigger club. And I hope, I guess, his example will help other Russian players move to a bigger team. Now we're going to move on to a different player, Denis Cheryshev. So, we're about halfway there. We got this guy and next player to go. Denis Cheryshev. So, this guy does not play for Feren Feren Kvaros. He currently plays for Valencia. And this man was the chosen one for Russia as football because he started at Real Madrid. And I guess he started his professional career at Real Madrid because he actually started at Sporting Gijon where his father, Dmitry Cheryshev, was playing at the time. So what happened was he trained with Sporting Gijon and Real Madrid noticed him. In order to remain in the country, because by that time, I think his father has retired from football, Real Madrid has hired him to be a coach, a youth coach. And I think there were rumors that also he was working as a bus driver to help out as well. So they both can have a visa and so he can stay. And he played for Real Madrid. And I think he's done not too great. He's played for, I mean, Team B, he played for Castilla, he was okay. I think he's even appeared for Real Madrid in proper games, as you can see. So he made his top flight debut for Real Madrid after all this waiting round on 19th September 2015, where he played 13 minutes in a 1-0 defeat against Granada. Funnily enough, he was also involved in a game, and I think it was also he got his first goal, and I won't be surprised because he's only goal for Real Madrid, in a game where... <laughs> in a game where he was also ineligible to play for because apparently he collected three yellow cards in previous edition of the tournament i think when he played for sevilla or sevilla valencia and basically he was ineligible and there was a lot of problems with that and i'm pretty sure real madrid did not go through in that one but yeah he's a great player who sadly has been plagued by a lot of injuries which is such a shame I think every time he started getting good, he got injured. I think when he transferred to Villarreal, he was doing well. And I think this season actually is perfect example. 2017, 2018, he was doing very well and got injured. This man is plagued, 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 plagued by injuries. And every time he actually didn't play many games for the Russian national team because of that. Like, I think every time we went into trying to get him to play for us, he was injured. And it's such a shame. He made his debut in 2012. So quite a while later i think and but to be fair he's had a good career so currently he's played 25 games for the national teams and in that time he scored 11 goals and to be fair that's incredible and four assists and he has done very well in the world cup as you remember he's played five games he wasn't even meant to play i think he was on the bench and when zagoev got injured they sent him on and yeah, the rest was history. He scored a lot of goals. He, I'm not sure if he won it or he almost won the Pushkash award with that amazing shot against Croatia. Shame we didn't go through, but hey, great, great player indeed. And hopefully he will finally get rid of his problems with his legs and stop getting injured. So some stats about him. He's born in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. He is age 29. So he is no longer the young kid that's, you know, Russia's excited about. He plays on the left wing. Currently, he has a FIFA card of 79 on FIFA. And I think he has one inform card. Which, again, a lot of Russian players do not get many informs. Sad. But they're not too great. On transfer market, his value is 4.32 million. Which is, to be fair, fair, I think. Because he hasn't been doing too well. I think in real life, you might have to spend maybe 5, maybe like 6 or 7. In-game, definitely, that's kind of backed up. So, if you want to sign him... After the first season, he can be signed for 6-7 million, typically. And weirdly enough, he does typically go to Zenit or any other Russian team. I think I've mostly seen him go to Zenit. And this is the first. I've never seen him go not to Russia, which is strange. Because Russian football has a tendency to collect all the Russians that go outside. Both in real life and both in the game. In the current season, he has played 27 games for Valencia. Scoring 3 goals and 1 assist. He is a decent player for them, and I think if he ups his game a bit more, 
he can be i mean he, he doesn't have that much time to prove that a legend for russia i think but to be fair he is starting to hit his peak and as long as he doesn't get injured like he normally did that peak could be good his current ability is 137 and his potential is 144 and i just remember how great he was for me in the olden days when he still played for real madrid because i remember i always signed him for chelsea because his potential was incredible and this is an example of a player who is just unlucky with injuries uh, oh well what could have been but to be fair age 29 a lot could have been and i think from this season he doesn't do much in football manager football manager doesn't believe even though he played a lot of games for them previously which is a shame i think he's good enough for valencia i think he's good enough to i mean do good stuff i think he comes off the bench a lot but again he hasn't had many full seasons which is a shame and in 2023 <laughs> And full manager, he plans to retire. Shame, 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 shame. But yeah, that's the end of this guy. We are now moving on to our last player. So this is the final guy we will talk about. And as you can see, he has retired. It's 2023. Makes sense. And he does stick out a little bit from the players that we've had because this man is not as well known for people outside of Russia. Because let's look at his career. The only place he played is Turkey outside of Russia. And this guy, the only reason why he's in this video is because he is a Russian national team player. He has played 35 games for a national team. He plays at left back, not the best left back, but in Russia, we do have a problem with left backs currently. So that's why a lot of the older players, that's why Zhirkov still plays, you know, Zhirkov is like 35 or something, and he's still probably one of the best left backs in Russia still. And so this guy also shows up occasionally. He is worth 1 million on the transfer market, which is strange for a man of his age. He is 33 years old, born in Irkutsk, currently playing for Antalya Spor. And as you can see here in the history, he's had an interesting career. So he was, I guess, a Spartak youth player, played a few games for Spartak, and then kind of moved around, wandered around Russian teams, went to Terek, which is now Ahmad, then Rostov, then Rubin. And then weird one, he left to join Bashkashir in, in the summer. In the winter, went back to Sochi for a bit, and then went back to Antalya Spar, which is very strange. And I think it's zero here because, because he transferred in the winter of now. Wait, I'm confused. No, because he transferred. This, this makes sense. It's because the database is done this way. But he's actually played a few games for Sochi. So I guess in this 2019-2020 season, he's played 16 games, one goal, and kept four clean sheets. Then in the winter, he transferred to Antalya Spar which he has done 15 games, 3 assists, and 3 clean sheets. So, very comparable in both those things. His current ability, in case you want to sign him on full manager, I don't know why, is 125 and his potential is 128, but again, he's 33, so his potential does not matter. What happens in the FM? Well, as kind of shown by this, he does tend to retire after Turkey because, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a meh player he, i don't want to say meh. he's an okay player and i think probably he the wages he was in turkey you can play for lower leagues in russia and i think he just retires i've never seen him i think he's, he might come back occasionally for for some teams yeah so he occasionally does pop up but you know he's an interesting player if you really want to sign him you can sign him for a million during the winter or during the summer again why would you he's 33 or 32 at that at the time of starting fifa uh, food manager so yeah this will conclude this i guess episode next up we'll as i said in the intro will be the um, the players that you don't know that are out there so it's going to be the good good russian players that are not as well known as these guys and have not played for the national teams so yeah i hope you're excited i hope you like this kind of video and yeah leave a like comment and hey if you want me to do more football stuff like this give it a comment i want to know and if you know any more russian players that have missed out that are very well known well first of all stick around for the <laughs> for the next two videos because maybe i'll talk about them but yeah give us a comment maybe i missed out someone you know anyways thank you for watching this has been a great thing to do i'm enjoying doing more real football stuff and connecting to the football manager universe Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.